I'm your man Cheyenne Simpson, here with the hilarious Gary Owens. How you doing, man? I'm good. Just got done with the Howard Homecoming show. You just finished killing the stage. How do you think you did out there? I, I think I did good. Everybody had fun. It was real. It was a real attentive crowd too. I like that. I like when you can actually tell your stories in there. And that's when you know you got them because they're with you. You don't hear any chatter. Nobody's getting up to go to the bathroom. Which joke do you think connected with the people the most? Uh, probably the first one. Right out the box, the HU. Oh, okay, okay, okay. And Did then you... me lying, saying I lived in Berry Farms. I was going to ask you that, because I'm from D.C. Did you actually live in D.C.? Yeah, I was in the military. I, was, oh, okay. I lived in Southeast, but in the country, I was on a military base. So I had oh, fancy guards. Yeah, I know you saw I was safe. I was an honor guard. <laughs> but this is where I, um, <clears throat> I, I moved here, this is the mid-90s, when I was uh, 17. And so this is where I, like... I don't know, like boys to men type deal, but this is where I start going out, and meeting girls, and stuff like that. I didn't. I grew up in a small town, Ohio. So this was like the the you know this is where I became worldly, I should say. Met different people from different cultures, and it was D.C. So you're known to be on House of Pain, very funny show. You definitely set the bar of being on the show. Are people expecting to see you next season? Um, well, it's all Tyler's call, you know. Okay. It depends on the art. He wants to take the show. I was just happy he brought me in. I did eight episodes. It was fun. If he brings you back, it's great. But the main thing is, you know, Tyler isn't just um, Tyler isn't just TV. He's got the plays, the movies, and as long as you're in his uh, wheelhouse, so to speak, it doesn't have to be House of Pain. It could be Meet the Browns. It could be his next movie. You know, I'm just happy that I'm, I'm in his so-called House of Pain or Tyler Perry Studios family. You know what I mean? Excuse me, man. Sure, everybody's talking about the president, man. It's good, man. It's amazing to me, amazing to me we have a, I have a mixed president. I never thought I'd see that. You know? yeah, I never thought we had a mulatto in office. I thought I would have seen that. That's crazy, man. I got a, a mixed president. I always say he's mixed because I'm real sick of black people taking all the credit. I'm like, that's my president too, okay? I saw his mama. That's Jason Kidd. That ain't Kevin Garnett. <laughs> you got to pass the ball. You can't do it by yourself or I'm going to triple double these countries, man. Tyler Perry, as a comedian, do you feel it's the, it's the point in your stage in your life where it's like you're trying to make the transition from comedian to TV show actor to being in films? Uh, I think it's a natural progression. Like I've done, I think I've done nine movies, and I was on the Wayans Brothers a long time ago, first season, and then um, I uh, now I'm on House of Pain. The last movie I did came out last summer. It's called College. It tanked. Man, it tanked. <laughs> Woo, man. It's actually a funny movie. If people get a chance to see it, it's in all the stores now. But it was only in theaters for a couple weeks because it didn't do that well. We had kind of like a super bad backlash. Okay. It was kind of similar to that. Mm -hmm. And it came out like a year after Super Bad. So people was like, oh, it's not going Super Bad. But, you know, it, I haven't. That was probably the biggest role I've had, but nobody saw the movie. Like, it was like me and two other guys. We were the stars of it. But the other movies I did was Daddy Daycare with Eddie Murphy. I was the Karen and Broccoli. It's pretty much been a character at this point. I was in Little Man with the Wayans Brothers. I was the cop chasing Marlon. I was in Rebound with uh, Martin Lawrence. I was the bird. We got in a big argument at the beginning of the movie. And I was in Held Up with Jamie Foxx. I was the uh, redneck cop that was shooting everybody during the movie. So I've done quite a few films with big actors, but uh, you know, I'm what you call a character actor. Mm -hmm. Like People wouldn't know me just walking down the street, but then if they see a movie, they're like, oh, that's the old boy, you know? You definitely just taught me something. But I'm not going to lie, when you say you was in the Williams, but it comes back to me now. It's like, you were in the Williams, yeah. brother. I need a better publicist, I think. <laughs> There's some, some good PR people in the School of Communication at Howard University. Oh, really? They might have to hire one on, a, on an intern. <laughs> <laughs> but um, as far as the show, how do you feel um, you connected with the audience? I think I was with them. I think they were with me. You know, it, 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 as a comedian, honestly, you just want to be free on stage. You don't want to have to be worried about what you're saying. And, you know, I had to mentally before the show be like, okay, I cannot tell this joke. I can't tell this joke. I can't tell this joke because they wanted it. TV clean, nothing okay. real major vulgar. So, just mentally had to be ready. There's a couple of times I almost got into something. I said, I can't even do that. So I just I, and people I saw on stage just walk around and get a drink of water. <laughs> well, I can't go there because that joke's leading me down oh, another path. Okay, okay, okay. But I, but I, you know, I got the jokes. I've been doing this a long time. I got enough jokes that I know what a good college set is and what they what they like. And then and then honestly, with the HBCUs compared to like if I was doing Georgetown, okay. it'd be a little different set, you know. Probably wouldn't do the Holy Ghost <laughs> at Georgetown with all the white kids. Probably not. But I, I, mean, I got the jokes that I need for the different audiences. 
Do you freestyle some of your jokes, or do you already know what you're coming? No, no. A lot of times, I don't know what I don't know what order. Like I didn't know that dude was gonna look like Neo <laughs> in, the, in the audience, you know? Yeah, I know you talking about. So a lot of it, some of it's freestyle, but you know, honestly, if I'm gonna freestyle, I want to be able to freestyle and be oh, free. Okay. When you can't curse, if I if I go that route and somebody yells something back, you know, students they don't have a, a filter. Mm -hmm. What I do, I couldn't come back like I want to if I'm gonna do that. But being in the game so long. What up and coming comedians do you think are going to be the next to break out? It's so it's so hard to tell because I know a lot of funny funny comics, okay. and honestly, it's like it's out of your control. It's right place, right time. It's a numbers game. Like if, if some of the stories that I've heard about how this guy got this part and this guy got this part, it's just it's unreal. Okay. And, and parts that really took people like over the top. You know, I'm not gonna name names, but you know, I know a lot of comics that was like they were the second or third choice for a part that set them off, you know? Mm -hmm. And you just never know where, like, honestly, I met Tyler Perry, I randomly met him, mm -hmm. and we just started talking. And then he said, give me a number, man, I, I might want to use you on a... Did you think Tyler was going to actually call you? Here's, it's funny, because I didn't know we had the same lawyer. We had the oh. same entertainment lawyer. My lawyer calls me and says, hey, did you meet Tyler Perry this morning? And I was like, yeah. And he was like, yeah, he just called me, inquiring about you. He was like, hey, what's, what do you know about this Gary Owen guy? And my lawyer's like, I rep him. <laughs> So I got, it was funny because I got Tyler Perry, but I had to get rid of my lawyer because he can't negotiate both sides of a deal. Oh. And of course, Tyler probably makes a little more money than I do. So he was like, Gary, I can't be your lawyer on this deal. So I lost my lawyer, but I got on a TV show. Most people do that. There's plenty of lawyers out there. Some good lawyers coming out of Howard's yeah. Law School. Ha! <laughs> I'm going to plug Howard. Howard. I'm going to plug Howard. Man! But, um... Up and coming comedians, like there are a couple of comedians coming out of here, um, the DC area. What would you say to them to make sure they get, like, to help them guide them to where they What I would always tell comedians, don't worry about what another comedian gets. It's just, that's, that's the one thing I know about comics, man. They get real bitter real quick. Mm -hmm. And if they're so worried about money, 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 and, and fame, fame, fame without working on their craft, they're going to lose focus. You know, because I, I always look at, like, people working in factories. You know, I see people riding in just terrible buckets in, like, 70, and I'll be looking like this. 70 years old, I'll be like this. Man, you can't, like, start over, you yeah, know? Okay. I say always stay positive. Don't worry about any other comic. Just focus on your career. You know? When it's all said and done, what do you want to be remembered as? Uh, I want to be the biggest ever. Ever? Ever as comedy. If you're not, then something's wrong. True. True. You know what I mean? And honestly, before Richard Pryor passed, he saw me, he saw me in the summer of 98 when I first moved to L.A. And uh, he came and, and talked to me after the show. He, he could barely speak, but he, all he said was, uh, he said, you're funny. So I was like, I'm good. If I got validated by Richard Pryor, then I don't need anybody else to validate me, you know what I mean?